Welcome in everybody, I'm Joey. Now S-Class is our open event this week on Forza and I couldn't help but wonder, is the Ford GT40 still overpowered as hell in S-Class like it was last year? So in the hopes of feeling like Max for stopping for a few races here, brought it out onto the track, starting at Catalonia, let's see how it does. And right off the bat, you can see the launch is insane. Elon Musk basically designed the tune on this thing. It's SpaceX Falcon 9 right off the launch pad. And here comes some hater of space travel, just ruining my chances of a win. And I'm stuck. This is what you get with this fucking shit show, honestly. So we'll move on. And here we go at Laguna Seca back in the GT40, of course, and actually not starting on pole qualifying second this time around and I should say I am cherry picking some races here I did a ton of races this week and in most of them it was just the GT40 running away with it it wasn't me running away with it it was the car so that might give you a little hint into my conclusion on whether this car is OP or not this year but Frondo second place right now we overtook him with the crazy launch on this thing right at the beginning he's gonna give us a really good race so coming out of the corkscrew He's going to go up the inside, startled me quite a bit. You might have seen me react with a quick turn of the sticks to the right. So clearly he's got the advantage around the corners, but on the straights, we've got it all the way. So here we go, down the final stretch. And as we finish off lap one, Frondo is going to move over to the left. We're going to go around the outside, get that first place position, but he's not backing down yet, right up the inside using that handling advantage around the first couple of corners. Or maybe that's one corner, maybe it's all one carousel. Either way, I totally butchered this right-hander, not getting out nearly wide enough and then running right over that sausage curb, losing a ton of time, and then, you know, going for a little beach vacation just to put the cherry on top. And the lap two, I did end up catching him just a tiny bit, sticking around at the very least. And now we'll basically repeat the situation from lap one, going around the right side of the Viper. And this time though, covering off that inside so he can't make the move, but he's going around the outside. He's looking for it. Luckily, he isn't able to get the move done and we stick in first place for the time being. He's all over my rear end. And this is where things start to get a little chippy. Receiving a nice tap on the rear end there. He wanted some GT loving. Went off track for just a moment. Getting back on, then he goes slightly off track. Not losing too much momentum, though. The GT40's bringing me right back up on him. Getting aggressive into turn five. I got the message back at turn three. We're rubbing and racing, so getting very aggressive there through turn five. Up the hill, getting right back in front. We're flip-flopping places left and right through the left-hander, spoken right at the bottom of our screen, but as long as I don't totally screw things up through the corkscrew, which I have gone pretty darn deep, he's there on our right side, more paint being traded, looking for the cutback, he is right behind us, parking it on the apex a little bit, trying to slow him down as much as I possibly can, because I know I do not have the handling to stay in front through these last couple of corners. And sure enough, he's got the inside for the final turn, moving slowly through there, so I hit him once again. You know, this is one of those races where we're trading punches. We are throwing haymakers at each other, but at no point did I ever think we were going to spin each other out. This is just some good, classic, intimate Forza racing right here. So around the Andretti hairpin for the fourth time, and we skip forward to the corkscrew where Guess what? I've gone deep again. This thing is my kryptonite. I've said it before in the past. Not my easiest turn by any stretch of the imagination. Frondo's gonna go right around the outside. Making the most out of my mistake. Flip-flopping once again up in the first he goes. And we've got third place, only a second behind. So all this fighting we've been doing has definitely been bringing him right back on into the race. Now we're drag racing down the straight for the second to last time. And if I can just manage to play a little bit of defense and remember what a racing line is for one lap, might have the victory here. We might just have it through the double apex nicely, getting on the gas as early as possible and moving over to the left to take the best possible line into the right hander, but running that sausage curve once again. And look who it is right on our tail. That's what I get for running over that sausage curve for a second time. 
so he'll go on ahead, but I know from past laps that I will be able to get right back up alongside of him by the end of the straight. So here we go into the braking zone and back to the left. He's looking for the cutback, a little tap on my rear end, but he's got the move done. Racing up the hill, third place is under a second behind now, or at least was under a second, just about a second ago. There we go, about seven tenths behind now with that 0.2 second penalty into the corkscrew. Could this go well for the first time this race? Well, it looks like I took it all right, but Frodo knows he's got to get in front of me now or else I'm going to have the advantage down that final straight. So he's got to build up a gap as quickly as he possibly can, and he's just about done it. Now I'm just about shitting my pants because first place is starting to pull away. Third place is only two tenths behind, and through the final corner, he's going to give me a little tap, which actually might have helped me if I didn't totally spin the tires. I've got to start pulling in Frodo now, and we don't got it. Fuck! At the time, I was absolutely pissed, but looking back on it now and having watched the replay, it was a pretty darn good race and definitely an enjoyable one to watch too. So we'll move on to Nürburgring in the rain. And instead of Where's Waldo, we're going to play Where's the Guy on Full Assist spinning out Alexis LFA. Oh, look, we fucking found him. It's just the greatest example of programming of all time from turn 10 right there. So for those of you guys that might not know, a couple of you pointed it out to me in the comments when I almost got spun out by a guy on full assist in a race in the last episode, but as we're nearly killed by a cone right there in slow motion. But at the start, if someone is on full assist and they are off the racing line, the car will immediately turn towards the racing line, and if someone's over there, they're gonna get spun out. So it's just a ridiculous thing that probably shouldn't be in the game, and if someone's on full assist and the car's driving for them, well then, the car should probably gradually make its way to the racing line. On second thought though, the AI driving and ramming people makes a hell of a lot of sense, so maybe it is very fitting for Forza, I don't know. In this race though, we start in the middle of the pack, so we're gonna slowly start picking our way towards the front, showing a move up the inside, and luckily I think that was a Corvette back there. Must have seen me making that move and did not turn in all the way. Here's a riddle for you. Two guys go into the schumacher S side by side. That is bound to happen. They're both going off the track. Moving into the top five, and we can try to catch this BAC Mono up ahead. Another really good car from Forza Motorsport 7, the BAC Mono. It was tearing up S-Class lobbies all the time, especially at the shorter tracks where handling has the advantage. On the straights is where the GT40 thrives, though, and already we're up into fourth place on the first lap. I think we might have been starting in 15th place, so... Skipping the lap two, we've got Baby Don't Hurt Me in the vet up ahead, and well, I've hurt him. I've hurt him really bad, but I've hurt myself more. Yeah, it turns out rain and lack of skill is a bit of a bad combo, and it's about to get a little worse because around the final corner, I'm going to extend off of the track and pick up a little bit of a penalty, and it's going to be about four tenths of a second, so that's just dandy. I probably lost about four tenths of a second from running off the track there and losing momentum down the straight, so compounding the mistake. But we can make up for it by getting around Baby Don't Hurt Me. Hopefully, we don't hurt him again. Driving through the stadium section now. He left a little space on the inside there, so I'm gonna poke my nose in. Doesn't leave a whole lot of space, but just enough to get the GT40 in there and only make a minimal amount of contact. Looking for the cutback coming out of the section and we get it done. So there was second place and it took me a full lap but eventually caught up the, the Mercedes in first. And we've got a chance at a nice comeback victory here. Mega Apple Pie taking a very narrow line through turn 12. That's gonna leave me the opportunity to make the pass on the straight, and I'm not sure what the stats are looking like on that Mercedes. It looks like he's hanging around, so probably has a pretty good top end, very good acceleration as well. He's got a move up the inside in the oven. I'll let him have the corner. He's moving pretty slow through the chicane, and on the exit, I spin the tires, but it looks like I've got the acceleration to stay alongside into the final corner. There's contact. I've almost spun, just about kept it together. 
And unless I forget which one's the gas and which one's the break on the final straight here, I should have the win in the bag. So a pretty fun race there with uh, the final overtake being made on the final corner. You can have a look at the lap times there. Yeah, this GT is absolutely ridiculous. The best lap, mine was 209. And then the second best was about a 213.4. All right, next up we got Lime Rock. And a couple of reasons I wanted to show you guys this race. One is we got the Mach 1 now. We were driving the Mach 2. Now we've got the Mach 1, and this thing is just as good. Maybe a little more handling, acceleration, and braking, less top speed. And then the second reason I wanted to show you guys this race was because this Porsche. Now, let me try to get the name right. It's the 97 911 GT1 Strassen version is, I think, the full name. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's insanely good. It's a great car, and honestly, this guy would have run away with the win if he didn't go try to cut some grass right there. The handling is just off the charts. It's got more grip than an NFL wide receiver. Swear, it's proven. But uh, at the end of the race, Aussie Pickles sent me a message. And yes, sir, I am recording, and you are in the video. Based on the capital letters, he was clearly very excited to witness my mediocre driving greatness in real time on his computer screen, so congratulations, sir. And shout out to Australia, too, by the way. Quite a few of you guys have commented saying you're from Australia, which is awesome to see. It's crazy to think that you're literally on the other side of the world as this guy has just committed third-degree murder and almost spun himself out, but... Um, Feel free to comment where you guys are watching from. It's awesome to hear. Okay, we're at Kailami, still hanging out in the Mach 1. Again, trying to pick our way through the pack, starting from the middle, exiting barbecue, and about to roast this Mercedes down the straight. Well, maybe not, he's still there, but it was fitting for barbecue corner. Dropping down into third gear around the long right-hander. We've got a big pack of guys up front. The green Porsche nearly going wide. The white Porsche staying pretty narrow. Looking up the inside of the green one, he's not offering a whole lot of space, so we're going to create our own. Get the fuck out of my way. Ain't nobody got time for patience, so we're through there. We've got a few spots out of that up in the top 10. Now uh, sitting in eighth place. Porsche up ahead, moving a little slow. Need to put the brakes on and we'll try to go for that overtake again maybe up at the corner at the top of the hill not looking like it's gonna happen he's holding that inside so we'll just see how things play out as we drive down the hill and well that's how it's gonna play out he's nearly gonna spin out as he went up into the back of the Aston so a free spot there luckily we weren't collateral damage there and took any hits from that and the Aston almost receives a hit from me as I go way too deep into the right-hander. He's having a pretty eventful end to the lap here. And so is that Ferrari, who has just been spun by the BAC Mono. We'll have to be on the lookout for this F1 future progeny right here. That'll do it for lap one around the final turn. And now we can see what that BAC Mono does down the straight. I would imagine we'll start pulling it in. But that thing is just going there's no stopping that thing in sight we're getting the better of the aston on the right side there but damn that bac just goes i think a video in the future is coming on that thing looks like we just had a mclaren i believe that is up ahead rejoin the track up through barbecue now hopefully no incidents through here but we've had some contact between the mono and that mclaren fearless taco hell of a gamer tag I feel like in real life, if you do so much as pass gas on that mono, it's going to go spinning out. But luckily, this is Forza, and some of the physics don't really make sense, do they? Lucky for him. Into Clubhouse, Fearless Taco, I thought, broke a little too early there. Ended up hitting him in the back, and I helped him around the corner, actually. He took it just about perfectly with that bump, and I end up getting half a second for it. So he gains half a second. I lose half a second. Makes sense. And around the right-hander... Lots of people going slow through there, and it's hard to avoid them when they're on the inside. So having to put the brakes on yet again through that right-hander and losing a bit of time there as well. And down the hill we go for the second time, sweeping ahead of the Aston Martin. Really nice move there getting done up into fifth place, top five. Good stuff there, coming around the long sweeping left-hander and breaking at that first set of markers. And well, Fearless Taco's got a mono up his fanny. Must have smelled bad because that mono is out of this race. He is nowhere to be seen anymore. 
Fearless Taco just proven he is an absolute menace under braking. You do not want to get behind this guy, which is why I moved over to the left because I was anticipating him to break way too early. He ends up braking way too late, and we can finally put him behind us. Oh, oh, no, we can't. No, we can't. What an asshole. I'm not eating tacos for a week because of this guy. It's usually a weekly thing like pizza for me, but uh, this week, it's not happening. But it's now time for a revenge overtake, and let's be honest, I'll probably still eat tacos this week. They're too damn good. It uh, That overtake didn't come too much later. There's just no beating the GT40 around sunset. The McLaren ends up oversteering through the corner, and we got the job done. Finally, we can put the fearless taco behind us. And to round out lap three, we're going to grab second place. And lap four is going to be all about catching the leader. He's about three seconds ahead right now. And it took about half the lap to finally pull that two under a second. Hopefully, he's starting to feel the pressure here. You see a GT40 in the mirror, and you know you got a problem. Up the hill we go. I've got the inside for the corner. On the brakes hard, toe to toe, into the hairpin, not got a whole lot of space. Tires are spinning up on the curb and I'm stuck behind now. This is not the ideal situation I had in mind, but he said sorry, so it's all good. I've got a couple corners left to make a move, but I do have that half a second penalty looming over my head. So if I'm gonna make a move, I better make it now and start building the gap or else I am screwed. Around Crocodile, still right on the back of QC here. Through the right-hander, still not able to get by. It's gonna have to be a hell of a move around the final corner. Still stuck behind and making contact with his rear end, slowing up the momentum, so looks like it's going to be a second place and we'll finish it in reverse, so at least we can do it in style. Another really fun race that came right down to the wire, and you win some, you lose some. That's just how the cookie crumbles, or in this case, that's how the hard shell taco crumbles. There are the lap times. A 146, another really great lap out of the Mach 1. I can't stress it enough. It's the car. It's not me. But we'll finish things off at Silverstone with a really fun and quick clip. Up ahead, you see a GT40 rejoining the track. My brethren. Well, he's masterfully running to James Bond. Pulled to the left. I spin him out. And guess what? I get a four-second penalty for it. And I'm just noticing right now, the guy next to me got a penalty too. That is absolutely nuts but that's where we're gonna end the video guys so are the Mach 1 and Mach 2 overpowered I'm gonna say no so that you guys think I'm a driving god and just leave it at that it's the worst car I've ever driven and by sheer skill I willed it to the finish line every single race if you guys want to download the tunes that I used on the GT40s feel free to go do that I made those tunes public so look up my gamer tag on Forza and you can find them there and if you guys like the video do all the stuff the YouTubers tell you to do at the ends of videos, and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, bye everybody.